Hello everyone, welcome to Off the Water. My name is Mark and today I'm gonna rig up one of my fishing rods for some jetty fishing, more so like a live bait rig style and it's what I always use for shrimp, but I'm gonna do something that is a little bit different in comparison to what I've done in years past. So I'm gonna turn over to the GoPro hat and uh, let's get rigging. So this is gonna be a slip cork rig. Uh, a lot of crappie fishermen use this. I've already done a video on the fishing channel. However, it there it's pretty faulty. And what happens is whenever you put this monofilament leader line through, which is 30 pound, it has a tendency to like wrap up on itself. So when you cast, and here, let's just set it up and then I'll explain what's a bit different. And for the most part, it's gonna be the knot because I use a uni to uni Get rid of that tag and now normally this is what I'm gonna use right there so look how big that is I don't know if y'all can see that but that's a fairly big darn knot and what happens is whenever this goes through the guide let's just say hypothetically this is the guide right here once this is coming through the guide it hits the guide and it makes a loud noise I've had them because this line is so big pop out guides on my rods and I don't want that. A lot of you have told me to use the FG knot. Guess what? We're going to try to tie that today. No uni to uni when we go to the jetties. No uni to uni. So I'm going to try to remember this. There was a uh, YouTube channel that I saw called Salt Strong and they were saying like how they tie the FG knot. And it made pretty darn good sense. I'm hoping that I can do this correctly. It said wrap a few times around your pinky. Make sure that this line is tight. Then what you do is you take the mono and then what you're gonna do is just pinch it. Maybe he had it on this side. I'm just trying to recall. So we got this line tightened down with our finger and then that gives us the other four fingers free is what he said so I'm gonna go up and around oh my god this is an atrocity that's one that's two maybe let's just let that dangle give it a dangle huh that's three That's four. No, come on, dude. That's four. That's five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and then sixteen. He said sixteen times. And then we were going to do some like half hitches or something like that. So here we go. We're going to pinch that. We're going to let go of that right there. And we want to do a half hitch with the tag end. And I think he said you got to go around the lead, the main line as well. So there goes one half hitch right there. Hey, dude, come on now. Don't mess it up. Right there. So that's the first half hitch. And then what we'll do is just try to seat that down. And we got it. And then another half hitch. Again, around both lines. Right there. And that's good. I think we were supposed to tighten this down. And let's give it a nice firm tug. There we go. 
go. All right. So that's a nice firm tug that we gave to it. That was supposed to bury itself into the mono, which is a very soft line. And hopefully it buried because if it didn't, well, guess what's going to happen whenever we catch a fish? Yeah, we're going to lose it. Here we go. Get rid of that. And then another two half hitches around the main line. It always looks clumsy whenever I'm learning how to tie a, a knot. But this is by far the easiest to ever that I have ever tied a uh, FG knot because the other way was just god awful. This one right here, thank goodness I saw that dude's channel and um, was able to replicate what he did because there we go. I think that's it right there, y'all. So what this is going to allow me to do is there's going to be no more busting up my guides whenever we're casting now. And I think that looks pretty legit, man. And so now let's get into the portion where we tie the slip cork. First, we're going to start off by using a bobber stop. And then once everything is put together, I will explain the like how it works. So you got the bobber stop right there. Then you need a bead. The bobber stop goes through first. So here we go. This is pretty simple, though. We get this. We go through with the bobber stop. Push it through our leader line to main line knot. And then what you do is slide this little thread off of the plastic. You can discard that. And then you slowly but steadily apply tension on both sides, pulling both pieces. And these tag ends will form a knot around your main line just like that. Well, let me stand up so that you all can see this knot against the black background. I mean, that's what I did it for. So here we go, cinching that down. Now we clip these tag ends right here as close as we possibly can, just like that. Discard it. There we go. So now that that's done, that slip knot is going to prevent our float from being able to go all the way up our line. And we can set a predetermined depth based off of where the fish happen to be biting at in that water column. So we put our little bead and we're going to slide that all the way through. And then here we go. There we are, just like that. And we got that right there nice and good. Then we take our float and it's a hollow one. So you just run the leader line through. You're going to put it through the red portion first. It's weighted down here at the bottom so that it ensures the float is going like that. So we put this all the way through just like that. And now we need a glass bead, which we got right here. This is going to protect our float from hitting the split shot whenever we throw it on there. So the glass bead goes next. Run that through. And there we go, just like that. Approximately three feet of leader line. We'll uh, clip away this portion of it. That's so that we don't have issues whenever we're reeling in our fish. We uh, take a size number two circle hook. The knot that, that I like to use for this portion right here is just a simple four twist trilene. So you go through twice and you form a loop. You take your tag end right there. You pinch that loop down with your finger and or your thumb and index. And then you're going to go around the main line four times. You got one, two, three, and four. Then you go back through both of these loops that you created. Hold this end nice and tight and then grab the tag end and then cinch it down. Normally you're going to wet this right here, but this is just for demonstration purposes only. 
you wet it so that if you don't, what happens is there's a lot of stress and heat built up into that knot and the heat that's generated by all that friction and stress will weaken the line. So that's just what happens. It'll get weak plus the line doesn't really get to seat itself down perfectly and it may come undone. But that right there is a four twist trilene, uh, also known as a four twist fisherman knot. I've been using it for years. It's never really failed me. You can use other knots, but this is the one that I choose to use because it's pretty fast and simple. Now, above the hook, we put a split shot because this is for live shrimp right here. And I want my shrimp to be weighed down. Otherwise, if there is no weight, the shrimp is gonna be floating up there at the top, swimming, chilling, and there's nothing to really drag the line down that water column so depending on how much weight you need to get the uh, bait down that's just going to be dependent on how big the bait is that you're using so i try to go about six inches away from the hook and we put our split shot right there six inches away then you just crimp that bad boy down just like that and then there you go so what what happens is that's what it's going to look like whenever you're casting now there's a lot of people who use jetty cork setups and you need about 12 feet of leader line and then, i mean it's it's very difficult to set up i mean it's genius it works they've been using it for years out there at the jetties but this is just a more well i'm just gonna say it's a little bit better because you can pretty much target whatever depth of water you want without having to cut your leader line and tying new leader on because of this little genius thing right over here. That's the bobber stop. When we cast out there, we can reel the rod tip all the way down to this right here and where the little bead is. So that's not gonna go through your eye of the, uh, the tip of the guide, okay? So that's about how far you're gonna reel down and then all you've got is just this line right here. From right there to right there, approximately three feet of leader line. That's all that's dangling. Your shrimp is there and then you launch that fella. Now what happens is if you wanna fish 20 feet down, well, that's what's gonna happen. It lands the split shot is going to take your shrimp down towards that uh, target depth and it's going to keep going until you hit the little beady bobber stop right there now the bobber stop you can move it to 20 feet of length so you grab it you pinch it and then you move it up your line just like that it's generating some heat that's burning me and then whenever it starts to go down, just like this. Okay, that's a bad example. So here we go. It's going down like that. And it's going to keep going down until the float hits that bead. The bead hits the bobber stop. And there you are at 20 feet. Now, if you find that the fish aren't down there at 20 feet, maybe they're at 10. Well, then you bring it back until you get the 10 foot of depth that you want. You bring it all the way back down and on your next cast, it's going to go down and then whammo. There you go. That's going to stop right there. This is going to be all the way at the bottom, 10 feet deep. And you can just move it back and forth versus any other setup. This right here is pretty simple. It's very hard to tie. Time consuming is what I'm meaning. Not hard. It's just time consuming. And I think this is going to work. This little knot, I'm hoping that it doesn't fail me. Every time I've tried the uh, FG knot, it's always failed. That's just because it's my fault and I don't know how to tie it. I'm hoping that this way works. So that right there is your, I'm gonna call it the jetty, like the live shrimp jetty rig. It's a slip cork setup, 
but uh, the live shrimp jetty rig right here. Hopefully tomorrow we're gonna have some good luck casting this thing out there. All right, y'all, that's gonna do it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to click that thumbs up button. And for those of you who have yet to subscribe and you do like the content that I'm producing here, be sure to click the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of the videos. I'm doing daily uploads and I just hope that each and every one of y'all have been enjoying them. If you want to see this rig in action, go over to the MDLR fishing page and right there is where we're going to use this guy tomorrow. So keeping the fingers crossed, y'all wish me good luck and I will see y'all next time when we're off the water.